Okay. Assalamualaikum. We meet again. <coughs> Can I proceed with the lecture six now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Good. Thank you. Okay. So let's have a look at lecture six. Uh, so basically, I divide this lecture six into two parts because the content is too big. Yeah. So for part one of this lecture six, we are going to have a look at these uh, topics of intermodal dispersion in optical fiber. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that should be the content of our lectures, uh, lecture number six today. Okay. Um, so if you can have a look at this CI down here, this is the excerpt for the CI. So basically, uh, for lecture five, we have successfully discussed about the attenuation, uh, which include the absorption, the scattering, and also the fiber bending loss. Okay, but dispersion is another topic, uh, which is very huge in terms of its content, because it, it is full of concept, yeah? It's full of concept, uh, full of facts that need to be understood clearly. Although the word is very simple, this is Persian, but the content is quite huge, yeah? Okay, so uh, we are going to have a look at uh, the introduction, uh, what is meant by optical fiber dispersion. That should be the first uh, things to be learned today. And afterwards, we're going to have a look at dispersion factor number one, uh, which is intermodal, yeah, intermodal dispersion. Okay. All right, so this will be uh, the uh, diagram, a figure, uh, which is actually sketched to uh, define or to show the effect of uh, dispersion. Okay, uh, so we, we, we consider that this should be the optical fiber, the blue color line is optical fiber. This is the input uh, point of the fiber and this is the output point of fiber. So if we pump in, uh, like here, let's say this is the pulses that is actually produced by the laser source or by the light source. So as the acid propagate along the fiber, it is noticed that uh, the width, yeah, the width of the pulse will be actually broadened. Yeah, we know that the width of the pulse will be actually broadened. Okay, so the broadening, the broadening process or the widening process of the pulses is called a dispersion. Okay, so we can uh, compare this dispersion effect with the attenuation effect that we have learned in the lecture five, right? So attenuation is about the reduction, yeah, reduction of the signal level, yeah, reduction of signal level, and which we it affect just the amplitude of the signal. But for the dispersion, it's about the the, the widen, the widen of the pulses. Yeah, that is why the word is dispersion. Dispersion, yeah, dispersion is mean uh, a broadening, a widening process of your uh, optical pulses that is said to propagate along the, the optical fiber. Okay, so what should be the effect of this uh, dispersion? So basically, uh, when we have this is when we consider only a single pulse, yeah, but in general we have uh train of pulses, yeah? train of pulses propagating in the optical fiber. So we can then uh, say that if we have train of pulses and if there is effect of dispersion, we can note that there should be effect whereby the pulses will, uh, I can say, uh, intersect with each other. Am I right? There should be a, a case whereby the pulses will be intersected yeah, uh, with, with each other, and as such, the effect will be the limitation on the transmission bandwidth. Yeah, so a limitation of the transmission bandwidth. I'm not sure whether you have learned about this uh, a problem of intersimal interference, ISI. I, I hope that you have learned this in a PCOM before. I'm not sure you have learned this or not, ISI. Intersimal interference. So the, basically, the effect of dispersion is uh, it will incur ISI. Yeah, intersimal interference, and when we have intersimal interference, the effect is the limitation of the bandwidth. Yeah, limitation of the of the bandwidth due to the effect whereby the signals or the pulses will be uh it will be intersected, it will be intersected. So due to this uh overlapping, yeah, you can say the overlapping of the pulses. Yeah, 
So ovulation of the pulses will incur uh, ISI, and as such, we're going to have a limitation of the bandwidth. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So there are three types basically: uh, a dispersion in optical fiber. Uh, the first one is what we call as a multi-mode dispersion, or known to be intermodal dispersion. It's the same thing. Yeah, so that's what we're going to cover in lecture six, part one. Now, and for part two later on, we're going to have a look at the chromatic dispersion. Yeah, chromatic dispersion will be learned in lecture six, part two, in which it is also known to be intramodal dispersion. Yeah, intramodal dispersion, and the chromatic dispersion can be categorized into material dispersion and also waveguide dispersion. All right, and also we had the third type, which is a polarization mode dispersion. Okay, so this is a type of dispersion that will be learned in lecture six, yeah, for part one and part, part two later on. Okay, all right, so this is a, a clearer picture on the effect of dispersion, okay, which incur the intersimal interference and a distortion of the signal. Okay, uh, we know that uh, this is for the case where we have a, a pulses, input pulses at time t1, okay, time t1, okay, remember, yeah, this is a little fiber length, this is sort of fiber, so it means that the signal is propagating from this end to this end, yeah, from this point to this point, from left to right, yeah, uh, so at time t1, which is at the input uh, of the fiber optics, uh, we're going to have very nice pulses, uh, we have uh, 101, yeah, so this is the, the digital bit uh, numbers, 101, uh, it is it, it actually represented by the pulses, yeah, and as it uh, propagates along the fiber at time t2, we can see that uh, time t2 is bigger than t1, we can see that the, the signal, uh, both pulses 1 and 1 here, uh, will we, start to overlap, yeah, will start to overlap, so we can see that there should be an overlapping of the pulses, but still, we can still distinguish uh, that the bit transmitted is 101 because the level of this overlapping is still low and there should be a threshold value somewhere. Yeah? There should be a threshold value where we can distinguish whether it is uh, level 0 or bit 0 or bit 1. Yeah, bit 0 or bit 1. Okay. But, but as we uh, proceed further, let's say at time t3, at time t3, yeah, as we as we uh, proceed for that time t3, we can see that uh, there should be more overlapping produced, yeah, more overlapping produced. And we can see that at this particular case, at this particular point, uh, the signals uh, bit zero cannot be cannot be detected because somehow it is above the threshold value of detection. Okay, and it can see, be said that now the ISI effect uh, will incur. Yeah, ISI effect will incur, and we're going to have a case whereby the signal will be, the, the pulses will be uh, overlap. Yeah, will be overlap. So this is at time T3, which is bigger than time T2. And as we increase further the time, that's this time T4, which is bigger than T3, we can see that the signal is totally distorted. Okay, then. Okay, so this is the, the, the effect of a dispersion uh, in a fiber optics communication, right? And particularly due to dispersion, which is uh, affect the, or produce the intercept interference ISI, and further on will incur a loss, yeah? Okay then, any questions on this? Any questions? No, 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 yeah? no okay. Okay, but hopefully, uh, you're very much clear about these issues of uh, uh, dispersion, yeah? Okay, let's proceed. Okay. Uh, now, uh, before we can proceed with the fundamental or introduction to the uh, the content of intermodal, yeah? Because the topic is intermodal dispersion. Uh, I think it's good if we can go back to uh, this fundamental ideas of velocities, yeah, velocities of light in the optical fiber, okay, because this will be very useful when we want to understand about the intermodal dispersion later on, yeah. Okay, uh, so we need to go back to second year, uh, semester two, uh, EMT, SKE 2523, yeah. Okay, so this is about the wave velocity, I believe. We have learned this in uh, the last uh, chapter of EMT, okay. 
where we have learned about the plane wave velocity, remember? Uh, where we have a case whereby a plane wave is propagating along a single axis direction, okay, in unbounded homogeneous region of refractive index. And this plane wave is represented by this uh, equation, exponential j omega t minus beta z, yeah? Omega is your frequencies, and beta is your propagation constant, z is a distance of propagation. And we know that the beta is defined to be equals to omega square root of mu of epsilon. Omega is the radial frequency. Mu is permeability of the medium. Uh, sigma is the permittivity of the medium, yeah? Okay, so that is the plane wave velocity. Okay, so from these ideas of uh, plane wave velocities, the wave velocities uh, in this uh, optical fiber uh, we can further classify them as uh, in two types. The first one is a phase velocity. Yeah? Okay, so the phase velocity uh, will be based on this beta value. Yeah, will be based on this propagation constant value uh, in which we have learned previously in EMT that the phase velocity is defined to be the omega divided by the beta. Yeah omega divided by the beta and this is should be equals to 1 over square root of mu epsilon yeah 1 over square root of mu epsilon so that is the phase velocity yeah i believe that you can still recall about these issues yeah of phase velocity okay but this is applicable the phase velocity is applicable if there is only a single wave a single wave propagate yeah, so we can use a phase velocity equation. But in case, uh, if we have more than one wave uh, propagate, for instance, we consider a multi-mode fiber structure, remember? In multi-mode fiber structure, we have numbers of modes. Yeah, and this mode is also known to be ray of light. And basically, it is a wave. Yeah, ray of light is a wave. So we can see that there are numbers of waves propagating in the multi-mode fiber structure. So each of these waves will propagate at its own velocity. Yeah, will propagate at its own velocity and this velocity is known to be, no, is known to be a group velocity. Yeah, a group velocity. Okay, so uh, I, I put it here that if there is more than one wave propagate or exist, so each wave will be having their own beta yeah, own uh, propagation constant. And then we have a concept of group velocity and the group velocity equation will be uh, the differentiation of omega divided by beta or d omega over d beta, which is a differentiation of this uh, omega divided by beta. Okay, remember, phase velocity is for a single wave propagation. Uh, group velocity is when we consider more than one wave propagation. Yeah, so that's the difference between wave velocity and group velocity. So particularly in the multi-mode structure where we have numbers of modes or numbers of uh, ray of light, basically there should be numbers of uh, a wave and each of these waves will be having its own beta or its own propagation constant. And this is uh, this wave, it can be defined by its own group velocity, yeah? Okay. Okay, so group velocity is the actual velocity in which the signal information and energy of a particular mode is traveling along the fiber. So as mentioned before, uh, each mode, yeah, each mode is defined by its own velocity, yeah, in the multi-mode fiber, yeah. So the energy of uh, this particular mode is, is is confined, yeah, is confined or is contained in this group velocity. Okay, so the delay which experienced by uh, these uh, modes, yeah, the delay because we know that when the modes propagate uh, in the fi multi-mode fiber optics, we know that each of them will be having different velocities. Yeah, we'll be having different velocities and each of them will be traveling uh, on different distance, remember, because it's using a total internal reflection and because of different angle of incidence, they will be having different length of transmission. So when we have different length of transmission, when we have different velocities or different group velocities, basically or definitely, we are going to have 
different time of propagation. Am I right? Yeah, because we know that velocity is distance over time. So when we have different distance, when we have different velocities, so as such, the time of propagation will be different. Okay, so this is where the concept of group delay arises. Yeah, because each mode, which is having their own group velocity, will be traveling yeah, at different distance. So they have different time uh, time uh, re required yeah, from the input to the output. So due to this different time, we are going to have a term which is called as a group delay. Yeah, a group delay, which is a delay incurred by every mode. Yeah, incurred by every mode that is traveling along the fiber optic structure. Okay, yeah, hopefully you understand clearly about this effect. I mean, the, 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 the uh, continuation, yeah, the, between the group velocity and the group delay, yeah, the group delay. Okay, um, so I put it here that uh, in on non-dispersive medium, uh, we're going to have the group velocity and the phase velocity is the same. Uh, for example, in a single mode fiber, okay, single mode fiber, why? Because for a single mode fiber, we are going to have only a single mode, right? A single mode means that there is only one ray traveling or one mode traveling. Yeah, so for this, we're going to have just a single uh, wave. So we're going to have a single group uh, velocity and this group velocity is same as phase velocity. But in the case on dispersive medium, yeah, dispersive medium, for example, in a multi-mode structure, uh, we're going to have a case whereby the group velocity will not equal to phase velocity. Okay, so from this statement, we can see that dispersive medium or dispersive uh structure is much, very much related to a multi-mode fiber yeah multi-mode fiber so a single fi a single mode fiber is a basically is a non-expressive medium okay so that is why later on i'm going to show you that this inter intermodal dispersion intermodal dispersion which is basically the dispersion due to the intermode intermode interaction yeah intermode interaction is actually uh, produce in a multi-mode fiber yeah so no intermodal dispersion in single mode fiber because in single mode fiber we only have a single mode transmission okay then hopefully you are clear about this issue yeah we'll try to get in the class somebody try to get in the class nobody yeah oh, sorry Okay, let us proceed uh, with uh, the slides here. Okay. All right. So once we have understand about the group velocity, the group delay, we are now ready to uh, proceed further with this uh, multi-mode dispersion or intermodal dispersion, or also, in short, we can simply call it as modal dispersion. It's the same, yeah. So multi-mode dispersion, intermodal dispersion, or modal dispersion are the same thing. Yeah, right. So when we when you read the books, the textbook, uh, we can have write these three names: the multi-mode dispersion, or intermodal, or also known as modal dispersion. There, yeah. Okay. And so it appears only when we have more than one mode excited in the fiber optics. Okay. So that's why we call this is a characteristic of a multi-mode fiber only. Yeah? So no such thing appears or exists in a single mode fiber. Okay. So each mode will be traveling at their own group velocity. I mentioned this in the very earlier slides before. And I, I said that it will take different amount of time to arrive at the receiver. So this is what I mentioned also. Different time due to uh, different group velocity and different distance traveling. Yeah. And the, to, the effect will be uh, it will spread out the waveform due to the case that part of the wave will arrive at the output before other parts. Yeah, because the time of reaching or arriving at the end point is different. Okay, now you understand it yeah? because this is related to the group delay that we have discussed before. Yeah, so the group delay will incur uh, a problem whereby parts of the wave will arrive uh, differently at different time. As compared to the other part of the wave yeah so the effect will be spreading out the waveform or in other words dispersing 
the pulses or dispersing the waveform. Okay, so you got the point here. Yeah, so hopefully by now you have now understand uh, what is the intermodal dispersion or mole dispersion. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I put it here that the mole dispersion can be minimized. This is how we minimize the mole dispersion. Number one, using a smaller core diameter. Why? Because by using smaller core diameter, we are going to have a uh, smaller number of modes. Okay, we have we have understand that. The modes number will be uh, proportional to the size of the core. Yeah, so if we have smaller core, we have smaller number of modes, and as a result, uh, when we have smaller number of modes, uh, the number of wave propagate will, will be also uh, reduced, and as such, uh, we can further uh, reducing the, the, the group delay uh, effect. Yeah, still there, the dispersion is still there, but maybe we can reduce it a bit, yeah, not to eliminate it, yeah. And uh, number two is to use a single mode fiber, uh, in which but definitely uh, there should be no mole dispersion because of a single mode uh, structure and single mode exists in the uh, single mode fiber, okay. And number two is by using a graded index fiber, the green fiber, which has been covered also in chapter two before, uh, in which we have learned that the green fiber will be having a uh, a, a, a special refractive index profile. Yeah, we can have triangular, uh, and and the best that we can have is parabolic. Yeah, when alpha or parabolic profile alpha equals to two. So we have discussed in chapter two. Okay. Uh, so we have learned that uh, we did few examples before in chapter two that when we have a same uh, index value, let's say for the core and cladding for both. Uh, multi-mode step index and multi-mode green fiber and with, this, with the same lambda operating with length we notice that the number of modes in green fiber is very much less as compared to number of modes in step index multi-mode fiber uh, so due to that we can see that uh, by reducing number of modes yeah in the green fiber we can reduce the effect of model dispersion okay, so that's the the, the, the idea why we we are uh, actually uh, being proposed to use the green fiber instead of step index fiber to reduce this uh, model dispersion yeah okay uh, right uh, so basically this also related to the previous uh, st uh, statement that I made on the effect of this uh, distance so uh, this is a sample where we have three modes in this multi-mode structure. Uh, this is for the fundamental mode, uh, m is 0, uh, m equals to 1, and m equals to 2. So we notice that the distance of traveling uh, are different, yeah? Distance of traveling are different. So due to distance, different distance of traveling and due to different group velocities portrayed by this wave, so basically we are going to get different uh, time, yeah, of the wave. Uh, from the input to the output. Yeah, so as such, this will then uh, produce uh, this uh, group delay, yeah, as we have discussed before. So this is a graphical way to explain uh, on this effect of multi-mode dispersion in, in much uh, uh, better approach, yeah? Much better approach. Okay, so let's have a look at this diagram, uh, which is also a discussion on the effect of uh, multi-mode dispersion that results in pulse broadening just to ensure that you clearly understand this issue okay so we have these pulses optical pulse which is having a width of t and it is passed through the multi-mode fiber which is having uh, let's say this is a sample here we have four modes only m0 uh, 1 2 and 3 okay so what we have here is the uh, time taken yeah time taken uh, for the pulse to arrive at this uh, receiver, we can see that uh, for m equals to 3, okay, we're going to have, uh, this is time, the horizontal is time. So we can have m equals to 3, we have the modes uh, width. For m equals to 2, we have a bit delay of the arrival, arrival time for the m equals to 2. For m equals to 1, we have a bit uh, is a delayed value yeah 
Uh, and also for m equal to zero, we have a delayed value of the uh, modes arrive at this uh, receiver. So somehow, we are going to have a, an extension of time taken for transmission of this initial pulse. We, of course, we have to consider combination of these four modes or four waves that carries this pulse. So as such, we can see that from just T in the input, we are going to have additional delta T of time taken for the pulse to arrive at the receiver. So as such, we can see that the pulse will be broadened yeah, from T to T plus delta T, which is the results or the effect of modal uh, dispersion. Okay, hopefully uh, I make it clear on uh, this uh, mode dispersion effect, yeah? Okay, so now we come uh, to the mathematics. We arrive to the mathematical equation uh, that shall be uh, understood. If you want to solve a problem related to modal dispersion, okay? Okay, uh, so on the mathematics side, okay, uh, we consider a case of a fundamental modes. Uh, so we have this fiber optic structure where we have a core of N1 and the length of the fiber is L. So for a fundamental mode, which is the lowest order mode, uh, we can see that the time taken from the input to the output will be returned to be this equation. Uh, we use a symbol of T min because this is a minimum time uh, of L N1 divided by C. Yeah? So from, from where this equation uh, uh, obtain, so you have to go back to uh, the uh, mean this um, equation of V equals to C over N, yeah? The velocity V equals to C divided by N. Yeah, V is the velocity of wave, C is the velocity of wave in free space, and N is the refractive index. Okay, so by manipulation, yeah, because we know that V equals to distance over time, L over T, so somehow we can find that the T mean, the time taken from the input to the output will be LN1 over C. So please uh, work out for this, yeah? Uh, yeah, this is LN1 over C, is the minimum time taken for a fundamental mode to propagate from the input to the output. Okay, now we proceed with the next part, which is a time taken for highest order mode, yeah? Highest order, this is lowest order, lowest order, this is highest order, in which for highest order, we can say that highest order will be having a wave which is propagating at this critical angle, yeah, at a critical angle, theta c, we know that this is the diagram we have. So for highest order mode, we assume that the light is propagating or the incident wave is at critical angle, at theta c. And the T max, the time taken, uh, will be equals to, yeah, time is taken, uh, will be equals to 2 L1 N1 over c. L, L1 is this uh, distance, yeah, L1 is this distance, okay. Okay, so that should be a T max, and in terms of L, we can write it as this, yeah, L over cos P and 1 over C, right, and T max in other way by using these equations here, where the sine theta C, which is also equals to cos phi, phi is this angle, yeah, which is propagating angle, and this is equals to N2 over N1, and somehow we can obtain that the T max will be L N1 squared over C N squared, over C N2, sorry. Ln1 squared over Cn2. Okay, this is the T max, the time taken for the highest order mode. So you can, if you have time, yeah, if you have time, please prove this equation. But uh, you won't be tested on this uh, derivation. Don't worry, yeah? I'm not going to test you on this derivation. Uh, what I want you to understand is the concept. Yeah, conceptual understanding is very much important here. Okay, so this is the time taken. The low, lowest order mode is T mean and highest order mode is T max. So basically, from this, we can calculate what should be a delay difference. A delay difference, uh, uh, which is due to uh, modal dispersion, will be a maximum time taken minus the minimum time taken. Yeah, because we know that uh, we have number of modes uh, in the fiber optics, a multi-mode fiber structure. So the slowest time, yeah, the smallest time taken will be the T mean. And uh, the, the highest time or the biggest time taken will be the T max. So the time difference or the delay difference will be just simply a, a, a difference between the T max and the T min. So that's the idea, yeah? 
So we use a symbol of a delay difference. Yeah, delay difference uh, or delay spread, right? Some, some, sometimes we use the delay spread yeah, in time. This is delta t. Uh, will be simply t max minus t min. So we can substitute the equations that we have obtained above here. Uh, we're going to have n up, which will be equals to ln1 squared over cn2 delta, where delta is your um, uh, relative index different. And in this case, we are using this value, delta n1 minus n2 over n1. And as such, we can also use the equation of L n a squared over 2 c n1, in which from chapter 2, n a or numerical aperture is n1 square root of 2 delta. Okay, so this is the equations of delay difference uh, between uh, the highest, biggest time and the slowest time taken uh, for the modes to propagate in the fiber optics. Yeah, and this is the delay difference. Yeah, delay difference. Right. So these equations here will be given to you. You don't have to memorize this equation, right? But we know that uh, these equations that used to calculate the delay difference uh, will be based on L, which is the length, uh, and one, which is the core index, C, which is the velocity of light in the free space, and N two is the uh, index of the clad. So these are the four parameters that will be used in calculating the delay difference in modal dispersion. Okay. Okay. Hopefully you understand this clearly. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, another methods of calculating uh, this delay uh, of pulse, uh, we can use a method of root mean square root mean square of pulse broadening, uh, in which if we consider the, uh, allow me to refer back to the previous slide, yeah? okay, this is the delta t in which we assume that the signal, the signal is said to be uh, not overlap with each other. Okay, so this is where uh, we can use the equations of a delay difference that we have here, but in terms of a statistical technique, yeah, statistical technique of calculating the delay, uh, we can use the read mean square method, yeah, RMS of the pulse broadening, yeah, and it is based on the calculation of the variance, yeah, or standard deviation of the input pulse with speed of delta t. Okay, I'm not going to cover in detail on the statistical method of calculating the the RMS value of pulse broadening. Yeah, but if you're interested, you can refer to this book of John Senior, uh, this page, or you can refer to other textbook, and definitely they will uh, explain about how to obtain the calculation of the variant or standard deviation that will lead to the calculation or uh, formulation of the RMS value of the pulse broadening, uh, which is due to the intermodal dispersion. Yeah, we can refer to any textbook. Okay, so Mr. John Senior from his textbook he men did mention that this RMS uh, impulse response of the pulse broadening uh, is symbol as uh, delta S. I'm not sure what's the name of this. Yeah, so normally I just use a delta S. Yeah, delta S can be estimated from this equation here. Okay, so this is another equation that can be used in calculating the uh, pulse uh, broadening or pulse dispersion but this is using a, a statistical method of rms yeah so uh, this value of pulse broadening equals to ln1 over delta and delta over 2 squared of 3c or ln a squared of 4 so 3 and 1c again we based on the equation it only refers or based on lang l uh, core index of n1 a delta of uh, this uh, relative index different or NA, numerical aperture of the fiber, and also C, which is the speed of uh, light in the free space. So that should be another method of calculating the pulse uh, broadening. Yeah, The first one is based on the delay difference, this equation, another one is based on this, which is based on RMS value. So to be exact, to be accurate, if you want to calculate this RMS, uh, we shall use this equation, a delta S here, because this more towards statistical 
and it is more accurate in predicting or calculating the mole dispersion. Yeah, the pulse broadening due to the mole dispersion. Yeah. Okay, so uh, from this uh, equation that we have here, uh, from this equation and also from the previous equation that we have here, these are the findings that can be made. Uh, in that, we can see that the pulse broadening is proportional to the core cladding in this difference, which is the delta. Yeah, so based on this, we can see that if the index difference between the core and cladding is reduced, means that the difference between core and cladding is, is, is small, uh, we can see that uh, we can reduce these uh, pulse dispersion or pulse broadening. Yeah? when we have a case whereby the index between the core and cladding is further reduced. Okay, and this will actually affect also on the NA, yeah, because NA is related to this uh, delta, yeah, NA and delta is interrelated. So also if NA is smaller, but for the case of smaller index different or smaller NA, it is called a weakly guiding structure, yeah, weakly guiding structure, because the difference between the core index and the cladding, cladding index is very small. Okay, so for this particular case, when you're using smaller NA fiber, the pulse broadening can be further reduced. Okay, so this is the conclusion, the, the, the findings that can be obtained from the equations, both equations, uh, this second equation that we have, and this is the first equation that we have from the calculation of delay difference, yeah? Okay, so let's have a look at these, uh, Next one is the concept of bit rate distance product. Okay, uh, so uh, normally in a optical communication system, uh, we normally uh, measure the capacity, yeah, the capacity of our optical system by this uh, parameter, uh, which is a bit rate distance, eh? a bit rate distance product, or also known as a bandwidth distance product. It's the same, yeah. When we said bit rate distance product, it's the same as bandwidth distance product in which this is this parameter basically will be limited by the mole dispersion yeah so when we uh, uh, studied about the mole dispersion we cannot run away from this concept or from this parameter so it must exist together yeah this mole dispersion and also the bandwidth distance a uh, bandwidth distance or bit rate distance product yeah okay for instance if you are having a system of uh, that capable of transmitting 100 megabit per second uh, over a distance of one kilometer. So we can see that this system is said to have a bit rate distance product of 100 megabit per second times kilometer. Because simply we just multiply, yeah? because that's why a product, a bit rate and the distance is multiplied. So 100 megabit per second multiplied with one, so we're going to have 100 megabit per second kilometer. Okay, the same. Uh, system with this capability also can transmit uh, this particular data rate or bit rate uh, which is one gigabit per second along 100 meter because multiplication of this and this will lead to the same value of 100 megabit per second kilometer the same things happen if you have 10 gigabit per second bit rate along 10 meter distance because multiplication of this will still give us this value and also one terabit per second along 10 centimeters. So this is how uh, we define this um, uh, capability, yeah, the capacity of a system, optical computing system, by using the band bit rate distance product or the bandwidth distance product. Yeah. All right. And I did mention here that the delay difference, a delta t uh, from the slide number 10 just now, okay, we have a delta t here, it's at number 10, this one, this is the one here, okay. So it can be used to calculate the bit rate b, yeah? yeah? The bit rate can be calculated by using the delay difference in which uh, this, uh, this is the equations that can be used to calculate the bit rate, uh, in which, uh, in general, uh, in order to avoid the ISI, yeah, in order to avoid the dispersion, uh, these are the methods, the equation that can be used uh, to estimate what should be the bit rate of the system. Okay, so there are two methods of calculating uh, the bit rate. Number one is when we consider 
there is no pulse overlapping at the output. Uh, so we can calculate the bit rate by using these equations here yeah, where we have 1 over 2 delta tau. Okay, tau is what? Tau is your delta t basically, yeah? Tau is similar to delta t. Delta t is a delay difference that we have learned in slide number 10. Yeah, so uh, the first method is by calculating uh, the delay difference, the delta t, and afterwards we have to uh, find uh, a value of 1 over delta, uh, 1 over 2 uh, tau or 1 over 2 delta t, and this value will be a bit rate in which your bit rate of transmission must always be smaller than or equals to that particular value. So for this bit rate use, it can avoid the ISI in your uh, fiber. Okay. Another method is by using uh, the sigma, the sigma s that we have learned in lecture 11 before, which is based on the RMS value, in which uh, for this particular method, the second method to, the, to calculate the bit rate is by uh, uh, yeah, by using the uh, the RMS width, the RMS width of this uh, pass broadening, in which it is equal to 0 0.2 divided by the sigma s. So the, basically, there are two methods of calculating the bit rate. Uh, the first method is when we consider no pulse overlapping at the output, and the second method where we have the pulse to have a Gaussian shape. Yeah, to have a Gaussian shape because we are dealing with a statistical method, so we can assume that the pulse is having a Gaussian shape. Of this RMS value, and for that, your bit rate can be calculated based on these equations. Yeah, so this is two methods of calculating the bit rate. Eh? Okay, so this will be a summary uh, on the intermodal dispersion. Okay, uh, the first uh, there should be these are the the things that we can note. Yeah, for a step index multimode fiber, uh, this is the equation that we have seen from slide number ten. Uh, this is a delay difference when we consider no overlapping of the pulses. And this is for the case where we consider that the pulses can be overlapped with each other. Okay, so uh, a delta t based on this equation and this equation for the uh, sigma s, right? And if you're having the green fiber but multimode structure, okay, I'm not covering that in detail in this uh, slide, but you can refer to any textbook. And this is the equation uh, observed. Yeah, because we are not going into detail on the equation, we just use the equation straight away. So for the green fiber, uh, it is defined by a uh, delta G, okay, equals to ln1 delta squared over 8C. And for this uh, overlapping Gaussian, it should be defined by this equation here, ln1 delta squared over 20C of delta of square root of 3. Okay, yeah, so these are the equations that can be used to estimate this uh, delay difference or pulse broadening uh, for both uh, step index multimode fiber and green index multimode fiber. Okay, so these are the equations. Don't worry, all of this equation will be given. You don't have to memorize. Yeah. Okay, uh, and for the bit rate, I mentioned that there should be two methods. The first one is by using a delta t, in which the bit rate is 1 over 2 delta t or 2 tau, is the same thing. While for the second case, where we have a Gaussian or RMS value of delta S, simply the bit rate is 0 0.2 over the sigma S. Okay, so this is how we define the bit rate of this uh, fiber optic system, considering uh, uh, no overlapping, or I can say no ISI in the fiber optics uh, transmission. Okay, so hopefully you got some ideas on this intermodal dispersion, yeah, uh, which are very much related to the multimode fiber for both step index and uh, green index fiber. Uh, I mean, I know whether you have a class after this or not. Yes, doctor, we have. We are at 11, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay, never mind. So I think I have to stop here because after this is just an example. So I'm going to proceed with example on our lecture next week on Wednesday. Okay, so this will be continued next week on Wednesday. And afterwards, we're going to proceed with lecture six, part two. Later on, yeah? Okay, okay. Uh, so I think uh, that's all for today. So hopefully you gain something from our lecture today, uh, which is on this uh, intermolar dispersion. Yeah, uh, 